Hey everyone, welcome back to Rally Caps, a podcast for the creative entrepreneur building a business for the long haul. Today, hailing from arguably the greatest city on earth, a legendary husband, father, and now New York citizen with roots, Ryan Brown and his wife Heidi run their business Forged in the North, where they photograph up over 150 weddings a year with a team of about 47 associates, I think. He was the co- <laughs> he was the co-founder of the workshop, workshop, which took place in Brooklyn for three years and hosted some of the most impressive wedding photographers in the world. He's an expert in commercial cinematography, and he's the proud owner of an RZ67 before Willem Verbeek made them cool. <laughs> Is all of that true, Ryan? Uh, no, I, I'm not the proud owner of an RZ before it was cool. <laughs> um, uh, the question, I, the I real question, got is, it as a poser copycat wanted to be cool. Um, but do you know who Willem Verbeek is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, actually, okay. I've talked with him a little bit. Oh, really? I like, I've like asked him about like labs and just random stuff. Nice. Um, yeah, uh, he uses like this random lab in Brooklyn that does like a 24 hour turnaround. It's super cheap. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, it's great. Sick. Right. But uh, yeah. So, um, but yeah, most of that's true, I think. Yeah. 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 47 wasn't as uh, No, <laughs> sorry, that's not true. Uh, we're at 10, including us. Wow. So uh, Heidi and I and eight shooters. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Um, six with, there's six of us on uh, Forge in the North. And then uh, we have a sister company called After It All, and there's four shooters there. And both photo and video. Both are both photo and video. Yeah. And I was right about upwards of over 150 weddings you guys have in the books yeah, for the year. Yeah, um, we're about there now. So I, I would assume like 2021 will be um, somewhere between 160, 170. And then, um, yeah, I don't, we're still finding that balance of like how many each shooter can handle. And mm -hmm. that probably will change by year two. Just sure. like there's a lot of there's a lot of dynamics when you have 10 people, everyone has their own life goals and ambitions and things yeah. that are going on. So, you know what I would say, like for our Forge in the North shooters, somewhere between 20 and 25, let's say weddings a year is, is safe. Mm -hmm. Um, with after it all, maybe closer to like 10 to 20, mm -hmm. but some of them probably will want more. more so it kind of depends. Like, it's yeah. structured a little differently. So, um, yeah, it'll be, you know, it'll be interesting to see kind of how this plays out by your COVID threw a wrench in it. So it was yeah. like, it, we don't exactly know how things will level out. Yeah. You know, before we dive into more of the business strategy and your yeah. idea with that, because it's, we like being on the sidelines and having seen it, it's been a culmination of a long time getting yeah. to that place. But we kind of, we were really interested in hearing cause I, we don't know the story of how you found the name Forge the North, yeah. how that whole, how that all came to be. Cause it's just such an epic name. And I think when I first yeah. saw your brand and workshop and all that, I was just like, that's just one of those names where you're like, yeah. okay, they're a big deal. <laughs> there's no, there's no way you can have that name and not be good. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was partly to find something that was like the antithesis of love and kindness and married and happiness. Like it was like, there was so much of that out there we felt like mm -hmm. with the naming and we're like, we want a name that's maybe somewhat dark and edgy, kind mm -hmm. of mimics some of the way we like to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, but also something like when you hear it, it's like memorable. It's yeah. like, there's no one that has a name kind of like that in the wedding world. It's, mm -hmm. it's sort of, uh, it strikes you and you, and you can kind of remember it a little bit e easier. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a ridiculous name. I mean, <laughs> in, in a lot of ways, like it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. But also some of the best advice I got when we were going through this was the name really doesn't matter that much. Um, it's, it's like the branding, um, the identity of, of your work, the, the actual work, um, those things are just so much more important than a name. So it, people get, you get hung up on a name because you feel it's like it's such a big commitment. Mm. But um, in, in the grand scheme of things, it, it really doesn't matter too much. There's, there's a lot of terrible names out there and, and people are doing just fine. Right. They, they have great work and that's mm. kind of really all that matters at the end of the day. <laughs> Simultaneous running watch. And, and, and we're move. done. <laughs> that was great, guys. That was, that was sweet. Move. I had a Garmin. great time. Oh, I had a great time. Great oh, conversation. Cool, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. You check out Ryan's work at ForgeNorth.com. Yeah. See, you <laughs> See you later, cappers. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, we are chilling in your Williamsburg apartment right now, which is the swankiest, coolest thing <laughs> in existence. Yeah. You're like I, you're like a block from the water. 
Yeah, block from the water. There's a um, yeah park down there, good for for kids, stuff like that. But um, yeah, we I mean we fell in love with this space. It's very flexible. Like there's a studio over there, and we have our office back back uh, around this corner here. So um, yeah, we just wanted a space that that was able to like flex with our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually like kind of hard to find that in New York, surprisingly. Like the, these kind of like artist lofts are a bit hard to come by or they're just yeah. insanely expensive. I mean, yeah. this is expensive, but they're, they're, it, it just goes up way more from this. So mm. um, yeah, we, we love it here. It's great. It's awesome. But we might move, so I don't know. <laughs> well, giving away secrets. <laughs> Well, well, yeah, it's it's uh, to be determined, but uh, likely won't be staying in the city like long term, and that's mm. not too big of a surprise. That's probably the the normal path for a lot of uh, for a lot of people, you know, including sure. yourself, right? You start mm. in Chicago with your family, and then yep. did I give away something? No, no, this, no that's, that's public that's information. Public. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're good. Now. You're like you idiot. <laughs> you just gave away my big YouTube reveal. <laughs> <laughs> big house reveal, yeah. not clickbait. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, you I mean you guys both grew up in Illinois. Uh, Heidi grew up on Long Island. Oh, I didn't so know that. So she grew up oh, out cool. here. We went to architecture school together um, in Elgin uh, at Judson. Uh, outside of she, Chicago. Yep, outside yeah. of Chicago. Um, she did her full master's. I stopped after my bachelor's, came out here to work um, for an architecture firm in New York. Um, she eventually came out and did the same, and then very soon after that we uh yeah we bailed on architecture and and just went full in photo and video um which i, I can get into that if you want yeah did, like did new york just kind of inspire that <sighs> or no you had, like, other friends new, in new york it, didn't i mean new york is a place where you were in manhattan brooklyn it, yeah so I was, I was living in williamsburg so i've been i've been here whole time. all 11 years i've been in new york wow. um and um, work, working in Manhattan. Heidi was living in Manhattan, working in Manhattan. Um, the job I got for the architecture firm I was at, I was doing a lot of photo and video, graphics, mm -hmm. rendering type stuff. Um, just had the opportunity to, to learn from some great photographers. I learned from uh, a guy named David Sunberg, who's a, a, like a renowned architectural photographer, mm -hmm. um, and was just able to do a bunch of random photo video projects i mean stuff that you know a lot of a lot of a lot of things you know i wouldn't really show now right but um but uh they were very formative and i learned a lot from that and that led to my first commercial job which was a shoestring budget commercial job for <laughs> nissan in la oh, cool. and that job came up i think the budget was I think it was about 40,000, but that included a lot of shooting. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the only reason I got the job was because it was such a low budget mm -hmm. and their options mm -hmm. in the commercial world that's, that you don't really, there's not production companies that will do that kind of job. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I had a friend in advertising who was like, I think Ryan could do this and, and brought me out. And um, that job was great it actually like won a bunch of advertising awards for it being like what it was it was this cool sort of crowdsourced car that they were building oh, wow. um and then yeah that led to another commercial job and as as i was doing these uh these directing gigs for for uh for advertising jobs um we were shooting weddings along the way so like mm -hmm. we had kind of shot our first one right as i was like coming out to new york um, and weddings were just kind of always on the side. And so we slowly built that as the commercial stuff was happening. Um, and in 2014, like 2013, well, actually, uh, yeah, 2013, 2014, we were still Ryan and Heidi's studio at that point. And, um, we decided to just like travel as much as possible. Hmm. Um, for about five years, we spent our... Uh, well, our winters uh, in New Zealand shooting during their summer. No big deal. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah. <laughs> so we we met these uh, great photographers, uh, Cy and Sophie. Their company is called Bailey yep. and Moore. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know them. Oh, I, yeah. You've met them. Um, 
and big fan of Cy. Love Cy. Big, oh, big you, know, you guys know big Cy. Fan. We got to right. get him on the pod. Yeah. Big so uh, yeah, you definitely do. Um, yeah, he's great. He's a good good friend, and um, we yeah we just crash with them every winter for like a <laughs> couple months at a time and shoot weddings. They got us our first like couple jobs there. Um, we kind of got our, our foot in the door. We shot their wedding, and then just kind of more work came in from that. Also, we, yeah, we made friends with a lot of shooters there, and they would refer us because they were booked up. Yep. At the time, it wasn't a thing that like people would go into New Zealand and shoot. Now, now it's, mm. I guess, become quite a thing. Um, and, and they're all like, go away. <laughs> well, yeah, actually a lot uh, the like people are, have been kicked out and stuff now because it's nice. very tight borders in New Zealand yep. and, uh, and yeah. uh, the wedding Especially industry is now, quite yeah. um, small. And um, I think some people were upset that people were coming in and um, Heidi and I may have partly <laughs> caused a lot of that to spiral out of control. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we went there and shot weddings and, um, and it's funny, like, yeah, being in New Zealand is a dream. I mean, it's it's just like an incredible place the people are amazing the weddings are awesome um and we felt so honored to be there and at the same time our couples our new zealand couples are like oh my god we have new york photographers coming in like that's uh, to them it was like a big huge. deal and mm. we're just like what we're we're pumped to be here like mm. are you yeah. kidding me um so it was it was yeah it was just such a fun time and uh, we have so many good friends there and um I think we will kind of keep going back at some point in the future with kids now and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Maybe shoot some weddings, but probably mostly just to like vacation and, and see friends yeah, and, yeah. and hang out. Um, but yeah, that kind of started um, that kind of started a lot of a lot of travel, um, you know, travel jobs that we were doing. We were kind of shooting all over the world, and yeah. um, that was kind of the foundation of a lot of our like early portfolio when we were like transitioning into forge in the north and that re okay. really legitimizes like what you guys can do and yeah yeah that's it's, those are amazing portfolio pieces yeah it it, it, it definitely was and they and they still they still sort of carry their own weight mm -hmm. even now yeah. um the focus now is definitely way more on like new york weddings mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. But yeah, for a long time, I mean, we definitely got feedback from couples. They were like, we love that you, that you kind of like shoot all over the place. And it's, it just feels like, um, you know, they just felt some people would say like, it would be like honored to have you shoot our wedding. And we're just always like chill. Like we, so, so people would be literally inquiring and be like, I don't know, would you shoot our wedding? We're like, yeah, of course we'd shoot your mm -hmm. wedding. Like, it's ridiculous. I, I <laughs> personally never understood people turning away a couple based on a venue or anything like sure. that like for me it's like if you love our work um we're, we're down right mm -hmm. like that's the big thing mm -hmm. and I, I just don't want to have to shoot like someone else or if you like someone else's work and you just want to hire us or something like yeah. that that's when it doesn't make sense but um you know if if they if they love what we do that that's that's awesome that's all i need you mm -hmm. know and, yeah. and so um yeah, we just kind of been always operated under that um, that principle, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So it was around 2014. You said this was all kind of kicking off. What was the point in time that you and Heidi had the discussion of let's rebrand from Ryan and Heidi Studios to Forged in the North? Let's get a name to put yeah. all this under. We had a studio of shooters at that point. Uh, we had four people. Um, in, in the studio, but all four of them had their own companies mm -hmm. that okay. were pretty full on. Like they, it wasn't like a side thing. Like it was yeah. like a, a big thing, but we, we wanted to have a studio cause we just all knew each other and we were friends and just thought it'd be fun to, to shoot weddings together and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think it, we all had like a meeting together in like 20, it was probably it was 2014, early 2015 where we're like, okay, what do we do? Cause there was, it was sort of like, we could all abandon our, our identities mm -hmm. as like Ryan and Heidi studio and Jess, and Jesse Pafundi. And I don't know if you know some of these, like Dan and Aaron were mm -hmm. in it. And, mm -hmm. um, Oh, I didn't realize it, it was like, it was not Ben and Paul and no, that yet. They had not come into the scene okay. quite yet. Ben okay. was like second shooting for us. Okay. Um, and so we're like, hey, we could all just form a new collective. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. um, 
or we kind of have to go our separate ways because like there was weird there's like jobs coming in for us and and them that was yeah. like we're all in kind of competition with each other but mm -hmm. also in a studio together it's confusing yeah. for us and for the clients and I think everyone just had a slightly different ambitions of where the company would go pricing wise, what kind of weddings we want to do. And everyone's portfolios are, are pretty different actually mm -hmm. now looking, mm -hmm. looking at where everyone's gone down their path. So it, I think it was a good move. We were just like, I think let's, let's, let's say goodbye to this. We had a fun time. There's, there was no a animosity at all. Everyone just, it was, it was a great kind of like falling out in that way. Yeah. Um, and then like Heidi and I were just kind of like, we need to reset and kind of go back to school to scratch here. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, we wanted to get our names off the company. We just wanted to get Ryan and Heidi off of it. When you have your names like that tied to the brand, there is some advantage in that, but it doesn't give you as much room to grow with studio shooters. There's always going to be tiers of shooters and mm -hmm. we didn't want that. Mm, yep. uh, we wanted everyone, if there was going to be a future studio to be on the same playing field. Yeah. yeah. So that's when we, yeah, went with Forge in the North. And we immediately took on Ben for video. And right around that same time, I had done a mentor session with Paul. Um, mm -hmm. And he was in Arizona contemplating whether to go to med school. And I basically just told him, don't go to med school. <laughs> and um, and uh, I was like, dude, you're, you're like an amazing photographer. I know a lot of people in med school. They're not happy people. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, I'm like joking, but like, uh, yeah, the, I, it just, he didn't seem, uh, he didn't seem all in on it. And I was okay. like, uh, don't do that. And he just had so much creative potential. Yep. And so I was like, if you come to New York, um, we could maybe bring you on as a studio shooter. And, um, and that's what he did. He's like, he just emailed me one day. He's like, I'm, I'm yeah, moving to New York. And uh -huh. he went to SVA, did his master's there. Um, and, uh, and, and just kind of took off. I mean, like when he first started, his portfolio was very limited and he was very new to photography. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's now become just a, a powerhouse in, in the New York wedding photography world. And, um, I, yeah, I, I personally think he's like the, the best, the best shooter in New York. Like I really wow. actually believe that. Um, Jeez. and, um, so it's been amazing to see him grow and Ben, Ben too. And then, yeah, slowly we've just added other pieces to that, to that team. Wow. Um, but for, for a while, for years, it was me, Heidi, Paul, Ben. Okay. And we just shoot a ton of different jobs together. We, Heidi and I slowly started shooting less, um, less uh, international work and then paul and ben kind of took those jobs so we started shooting more local paul and ben were young and hungry to travel yep. and yeah um they're like hell yeah let's 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 go shoot in europe and nova scotia and, and the caribbean and all these places and um and so yeah that was that was like the studio for a long time until about 2019 when things took a, a different turn so um with after it all and stuff like that mm -hmm. jeez so wow. yeah, it's a it's a long it's a long journey, um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting looking back on that. I think at the time when we were booking um, travel work for us, we were just like, "This sounds fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are young with no kids. Let's travel. Let's do this." We were certainly taking a financial hit to do it. Yeah, um, we always charged for well um, up until maybe twenty seventeen. We always charged local rates. So mm -hmm. if we were shooting in Ireland, uh, I would investigate and research, figure mm -hmm. out how much our photographers charging there, and that's what we would charge. Mm -hmm. And um, and that went for every country we worked in, um, which probably did help us winning a lot of jobs. Is we felt a little bit more like locals. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but at the same time, you like a couple of our seasons, we'd go there and like. August, September, October, and that is the best time to make money in New York. That's mm, the busiest yeah. time here. And so, yeah, it, we took a financial hit then, but the it was sort of like, yeah, an investment in the business, a long-term payoff kind yep. of thing. Yep. Um, Having the self-awareness to see that that could be a long-term payout. Mm -hmm. there was That was always in the back of our mind, but it was just like, will, will it? Yeah. You know, we don't know. Yep. Um, but at the same time, we're traveling the world and having fun. And just try it, yeah. Newlyweds. And so, like, we're we're... So it was just kind of like, let's live life. Let's do this. Like, why, why, why play it conservative here? Mm -hmm. um, 
And yeah, we were able to kind of like manipulate that and work it into our branding and make it like a featured asset, you know, rather yeah. than like, oh, we didn't make much money for those years. Um, and yeah, now it's, it's paid off um, tenfold. So for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. You said it was 2019 that after it all came into the yeah. picture. Yeah. What was the, what like provoked that, like starting a sister company to Forged? An amazing we, name too. Uh, yeah, seriously. What, yeah. You, you guys are geniuses. Uh, that, that, that was a, that was a potential, like Forged in the North name. Okay. Um, it got poo-pooed by a friend of mine. Actually, my buddy in advertising that initially brought me out for that Nissan job I mentioned earlier. Um, he does all of our copywriting and, okay. um, and helps us with a lot of our, our, yeah, just branding stuff, language. And um, I remember pitching it to him and he was like, didn't like it. And I was like, no, it's so good. It's like, you're, <laughs> you're going after it all. But then also like after the wedding, like you only have the photo and videos left. And so it's like a double entendre. So it's perfect. It sounds fun. Um, and I remember him like not vibing with it. And then, <laughs> and that was like, yeah, in 2014, 2015. And then in 2019, I didn't consult him. I'm like, this is this this is the name. I've always loved it. We're doing this. This is the second name. And he's like, dude, I love that name. <laughs> I'm like, bro, <laughs> you you killed that idea. That could have been our actual name. But it, it all worked out. I mean, yeah, it's, um, yeah. So we formed we formed that because we, uh, for uh, me, Heidi, Paul, and Ben, we were maxing out at you know, we'll call it like 80 to 90 weddings a year combined, right? Yeah. For mm -hmm. all, for all of us, um, for years, I would say starting in 2016, 2017, we just kept ramping up with more and more inquiries where it got to the point in 2018, 2019, we were consistently doing like six to 800 inquiries a year for 80 to 90 bookings. That's you're just leaving a lot on the table. So it's just like constantly either telling couples were booked, Mm -hmm. or couples saying were too expensive. Mm -hmm. Those were the two uh, that covered 95%, maybe even more, 95% of reasons we didn't book that other wow. 700 so was either we were booked out of money. Or, or it was too expensive. So I was like, well, the solve then just seems to be more shooters for the availability mm -hmm. problem at a lower price point for the pricing problem. And I was like, maybe, maybe that will work. And um, we brought on some, it some did. studio shooters and it did. And <laughs> it did. people, people have been loving it. I mean, there's just Great. so many, you know, so like, uh, I don't know if we, I can get into pricing. I don't know if that's relevant to a lot of as, people as much as you want to get into so, it. Yeah. Like, yeah, with Forge in the North, we start around 5k mm -hmm. and at a starting base price, that's pretty competitive with people who we're in competition with mm -hmm. in New York market, um, probably on the low side, mm -hmm. um, with our average package being, yeah, six, I would say six to seven mm -hmm. is sort of like our average booking. And we love that. That's a great price yep. point for us. We love those weddings. We love those couples. Yeah. You get, start to get uh, too much higher than that. The, uh, the wedding dynamic changes, you kind of become a vendor and you higher get, end you just feel like you're not really a part of it. Um, yeah. And so we, we love where that's at. And then after it all starts in the, the mid 3000s, okay. and that's where the vast majority of budgets are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, most people don't have 5K plus budgets. Yep. Um, in New York, a three to 4,000 photography budget or videography budget is uh, the, yeah, the majority of weddings. Mm -hmm. um, and so we sort of had like Forge in the North's name and reputation kind of filtering into after all. So people would inquire with Forge in the North if we were booked or, or too expensive, sort of funnel them into after it all. Be like, hey, we have a sister company, great shooters. We still do all the editing. So it's still the Forge in the North editing. Okay. Um, and we very much play that up and be like, hey, that's where a lot of, it's you know, value. a lot of the um, decision making is happening. and sort of some of that styling and, and stuff you see with the Forge of the North work, mm -hmm. you get, you'll still get that with after all, you just have a different shooter. Um, and still structured the same where like people book a, like a specific shooter, they're not just like assigned one, right? So like yeah. they have to really connect with that person, just, just the same with um, For sure. Forge of the North. And um, yeah, the idea behind that was to figure out a way to make more money than we do with the bookings with Forge of the North so that it was a bit more lucrative for us, but also still a good thing for our shooters. 
Right. Um, you know, for for Heidi and I, we've always just tried our best to figure out win-win situations with yep. our shooters. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm a huge believer in like figuring out where where they are in their life, what are their goals, mm-hmm. and just helping them as much as possible, and then being as transparent with them on okay this is what i need to make for this to work i want to make sure this you're making enough Mm -hmm. of what kind of other work because with the after it all shooters that that's not a full-time job for them they can't make enough for like a full so like what are you doing well we have one who's in school and we have another one who does a lot of like commercial and editorial work um so like everyone's doing kind of something different really good side hustle um yeah exactly and so like people can there's an appeal for people to just show up and shoot and hand the cards off yep. and yeah. kind of it's wipe, wipe their hands clean. Yeah. Um, whereas like, yeah, the Forge and North shooters, this is full-time job. They, they, yeah. um, they are editing everything themselves and, okay. and doing all that. So you're creating so much opportunity. It's not just, you know, a lot of creative fields. It's um, a lot of people talk about like, this is a really important part about it. I think is the whole community aspect of, Hey, if you're if you're already booked, like you're gonna hopefully get referrals from that person you make connections with. But what you're doing is something even more sustainable for people who are looking to step into something a little bit more structured, and yeah. filling in some of those gaps of people who are they want the consistency in their life, and they may might not want to do the admin work, or they might not want to do the editing. And so you're just finding those niche people. Yeah. Where again, it's that win-win. And because yeah. I wanted to get a little bit more into your philosophy, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Our, our tag at the beginning of every episode is, you know, we want to be talking about bidding, building businesses for the long haul. Like what's yeah. what's actually sustainable in a yeah. creative world? It doesn't just have to be wedding photography. I know that's like, that's the realm that we kind of yep. exist in um, and have existed in. But like, what, you know, what are you building towards? What are yeah. some of the things like goals in your personal life and your hopes for the, the goals of some of your associates too? I'm sure you think about that as well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the first priority for me is making sure it's good for the shooters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of backtrack from there and say, can I make it work for me too? Hmm. I think when you flip that, and a lot of people do, they say like, okay, how can I just like go and make money? Or like, what can I get from you? How can I squeeze another dollar out of you? Um, it's it's not it's not gonna last, not and those people will feel that. Yep, they'll mm. feel like they're being squeezed. Used, yeah. Um, and so, the philosophy for us is just like, take all the people we know and love that do amazing work, and can can we all work together? Does it work for them? And then does it make sense for us? And so it's beautiful. With Forge in the North, for instance, um, we don't do. A percentage we do a flat fee because whether I book Paul on a base package job like a five thousand dollar job or a ten thousand dollar job, the ad the additional admin work is clicking a few extra buttons on their invoice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's no hmm. uh, there's no reason that I should necessarily deserve. You could make an argument that like we're we're selling it and we deserve a piece of that, but I would rather them benefit from all that extra work. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and so. Um, <clears throat> whereas with after it all, it's a bit more of a traditional setup where the shooter gets paid like a day rate mm-hmm. and then they get paid like certain amounts for every add on, but we get a piece of that because we're also doing the editing. editing so if there's like yeah, overtime right. hours, they get some of that, but we get some of that too. Cause we're, that's more work for us for too. Editing, yeah. Totally. So that's just how we've structured it. And everything is completely transparent with every single one of our shooters they that's have great. to log in to our full back end wow. they can see what anyone else makes on any job they can see everything Whoa. so it's full transparency that's and awesome. i think that's been huge for us because again there's just a level of trust that all of us have yep. that a lot of studios don't mm-hmm. um and if someone if no, no one's ever been upset or anything had to like come to us and and say anything but if someone did then um we they have all the information we can figure out a way to make it work um it's it's yeah it's literally never happened i mean it's been it's been great like paul and ben and everyone is is very happy with the arrangement and um and so yeah we've just kind of always done that because there's been nothing else that we've needed to to try so cool man. yeah yeah oh gosh you guys are building towards now potentially buying a home yeah yeah and that's probably been on your mind for a while, especially yeah. now that 
you have two kiddos yeah buying a home um yeah we're we're yeah we're, we're saving up to to try to get a home i think for us like because of the architecture background we've always wanted to like design something ourselves <laughs> yeah. and make yeah. something our own and it's hard to do that when you're in rentals all the time in mm -hmm. new york um and to buy something of the size we would need with kids and home office and all that stuff hopefully a studio I mean, yeah, it's, it's like many millions of dollars if you want to live in a neighborhood with good schools and yep, stuff like yeah, that. So yep. it's just not, yeah, that's not feasible and not desirable for us. So um, yeah, moving outside the city kind of makes sense at this point. And um, yeah, we're, it's really interesting that we're having this podcast because like I, we're right in the middle of about to do a sort of very deep dive on our um, kind of risk tolerance of, of how much all in we want to pay per month for a home yeah, and yeah. what metric to go by. Like, okay, we've been paying this in rent every month and that's been comfortable. So is it safe to assume, can we project that out for 30 years? Yeah. Mm. How much more buffer room do we want? Sure. We're adding another kid at some point potentially. So there's, there's a lot of moving pieces. And, and I think this actually this weekend, I'll probably be sitting down with Heidi's brother who does finances and, mm. um, creating a bit more of like a mathematical approach to it and like actually That's crunch awesome. the numbers of like, ideally we're, what I want to figure out is how few weddings do I need to, sh or can I get away with yep. to sort of like make all of our, our important costs in whatever that future yeah. house is. Yep. So if I can look at that and be like, okay, like maybe that's 20 weddings or 15 weddings. That's like our bottom yeah. number. Then I can say, um, very confidently we can book that, yeah. you know, every year and, and everyone in the studio might take a hit in, on, on a year like that. If mm -hmm. it was like really bad, say like a COVID or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out right now. Um, and such a dad man, move. I love it. It's like, yeah, <laughs> let's go just hit it's the like, spreadsheets. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to do. It's, just, it's so emotional too. Cause you yeah. don't, you don't, as, as you know, I mean, um, you're like, wait, Steven I, knows I, he has I, two cats. Yeah, oh. the, the cats. I mean, the, I, the cost, I, the litter. I die for them. The, yeah. the litter alone. The litter. <laughs> Jeez, how do you, how do you account for that? Bathroom expenses are through the roof. God, you have to shoot like two headshots a year. For, <laughs> how do you? That's amazing. In this market? Has, In this economy? No, yeah. Don't even think about it. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it it is very. It's very, it's very emotional and hard to uh, wrap my head around. Even it's, it, you know, like we do all these weddings. It seems like everything's going so well. But even I'm like, uh, but will it last? How long? How long? Um, I have no plans to stop anytime soon. Right. Like we want to keep this going for as long as we can. And there's always going to be new shooters and people we could bring into the team mm -hmm. if some people want to transition out. So. Yeah, I feel I feel really good about it all. Um, Some encouragement in that, something yeah. I've been feeling recently, is you went from having a completely different degree and something entirely different and pursuing another career, and you made a business with eight employees that you mm -hmm. hired. Like, who's to say you can't just do that all over again? Sure. You have the mind and the capacity to do so. Yeah. You know, it's like even if everything went to trash, yeah, you have you have the power and the capability to do that, and, and I think that yeah, that's definitely true. And I think for me, the other component of it is in the in the back of my head, I I always feel like Heidi and I will be fine. I'm not as worried about yeah. that, but there's eight other people yeah. who yeah. were now putting were a lot of yeah. um, money on on their tables for and and with the four other shooters in Fortune North, it's basically their full-time thing. Yeah. Um, they do some other work, obviously, but it's definitely the bread and butter. And then um, with the After It All shooters, that's a bit more transient. We know that those shooters probably are not gonna be with us for 10 years. Mm -hmm. they, they might be doing other things. Um, but yeah, I think in the back of my head is like, I know like if really it came down to it, I could protect Heidi and I. Mm -hmm. um, could I do that for everyone in our studio? That's a bit more of an unknown. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's some of their risk tolerance as well. Yeah. You know, it's like they know what they're signing up for and the potential that something like that could happen eventually. And COVID was like the 
biggest litmus <laughs> test yet. Yeah. Like huge, um, hugely thankful that um, everyone on our team is rock solidly still with us. Like not, there was never even a, a inkling of like, oh, I, I can't do this anymore. Um, we all got through it. Mm -hmm. um, everyone was very gracious with however we wanted to handle the business side of things. Mm -hmm. Um, we fought super hard as much as possible for all of our shooters. Um, but of course, when you're just dealing with like hundred plus weddings, there are some losses you have to take. Sometimes you just have to, um, yeah, you, you, things won't go your way. Mm -hmm. And, and that's just kind of the, the way it goes when you're dealing with like a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, for the most part, I mean, everything did end up okay and, um, we're still here and. We didn't like get evicted or anything like that, right? <laughs> I mean, like, um, so everything's good, and um, and that we're very, yeah, very thankful for. Yeah, it's even more encouragement to let you know that. Yeah, you can keep it going. Well, hopefully, have a future. For yeah, sure. and and I think going back to kind of something you were asking earlier is like, what what is the goal? What's the plan here? I mean, I think definitely shoot some some less weddings for for us. Mm -hmm. I've decided, I decided like a couple of years ago, I didn't want to keep pursuing commercial directing. Okay. That didn't feel right to me. Hmm. Um, I was moving up the ladder in that world, getting bigger and bigger jobs. Um, I did have a lot of fun doing it, but you are, if you're a young commercial director, you are pitching on jobs all the time that mm -hmm. you don't get, mm -hmm. ton, a ton of work that you never get paid for. Um, you and that's is, I don't know if you're familiar with that process. It's very intense. There's it's phone cool. calls. There's treatments. You have to put together tons of references. You have it's it's very emotional and it, you really get tied to it. And you're it's almost always triple bids. So it's you and two other people you'd be going against. And um, yeah, then you lose the job and you're like, crap. I really wanted that one and there's yep. nothing you can do it. And, and it works super hard to land it. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes the reasons you lose the job are silly yeah um so the other component to that is you're constantly traveling and once i started having once i had harlow i was like i don't want to be on the road for like random weeks throughout the year that i have no control over yep. commercial mm -hmm. jobs come up super last minute mm -hmm. that just was not appealing to me i'm like no I, like i'm very thankful for weddings it's consistent mm -hmm. it's reliable um, and so I think for me, it's like, I don't mind doing those every now and then it's harder to get those if you're not constantly in, in it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for Heidi and I, we've kind of like, again, gone back to the drawing board on the commercial side and like, what can we do together? And so like now we're more interested in smaller brands, smaller projects where awesome. it's like just Heidi and I, and maybe mm. a couple crew people so cool. yeah. and it's very agile yep. and, and easy in and out. And you can really impress your clients yep. and um, not as high of stakes mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, that's become a lot more appealing. So a kind of a mix of that so, just to sort of like scratch the creative itch of like, let's do some other things besides weddings. Cause the cool. weddings at this point, the creativity side of it, um, kind of capped out. Yeah. I, I, I now know what I like to do. I know what the clients want me to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm, totally happy to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't need to reinvent myself yep. too much. Like little changes here and there, of course, are normal. Yep. And you kind of constantly progress a little bit, but uh, not like it used to be where we were like trying wildly new to, things yeah. every wedding. And yeah. it's like this one, we have to blog and like, <laughs> yeah, it's just not like that anymore. Yeah, I think a lot of people really struggle with the idea of needing to do that all the time. And yeah. again, it's 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 really kind of, I've, I've noticed in, in any kind of creative job is people are struggling with that, especially in the early years. Like, I gotta do the next big thing, gotta do the next creative thing, the mm -hmm. thing that's gonna set me apart. I think all of those things are important in the beginning to find your voice, yeah. but then I think that kind of taints people and causes burnout, taints people's view of um, what a sustainable career in that industry would look like then, mm -hmm. because there is going to be a lot of repetition. Yeah. And then you need to find ways that like, being okay with that repetition and then finding ways to see how it's nuanced with with emotions with um empathizing with clients mm -hmm. you know and 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 just stepping back and seeing it from an outsider's perspective mm -hmm. definitely yeah. i mean definitely to all that um you guys are doing it so well too i mean well the attitude's yeah, amazing it 
and it um having a kid changed that yeah. big time mm-hmm. um again i i think yeah if you would ask me three even three years ago when things were really rocking with forge in the north stuff i would have probably still said no i'm, I'm gonna be a commercial director like yeah. i'm gonna phase out and that's what i want to do yep. um and um I, yeah for all the reasons i just said is it just became less appealing but i found a lot of i had i did have one kind of uh commercial job that was very emotional and i put a lot into it and um it turned out great but um the it became evident that the uh yeah a lot of people like advertising people involved were just kind of going after an award Mm. and um Mm. it was a very like heartfelt project it was a pro bono piece and um that really kind of uh rubbed me the wrong way Mm. and i just had a very new after that job i had a very new appreciation for weddings um Mm. i was kind of at that point slightly bitter towards weddings because i was like uh, i just felt used and abused and Mm. this is like this is going to get old and it's not fun anymore and then i after that i was just like man I am so thankful to have clients that love to work with me and that I can just kill it for them yeah. and they're going to be like obsessed so stoked. Yeah. and like that. And those are images that they pass on through generations and they're always going to have that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are commercials? I'm yeah. just trying to make a big company bigger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm a profitable company, more profit. Mm-hmm. Where's the joy in that? Mm-hmm. And by the way, at the end of the day, they are commercials. Mm. Everyone's trying to skip commercials their whole life. Like no one really cares about commercials unless it's the Super Bowl. Mm. So, man, and, and even the Super Bowl, do you remember how many commercials do you remember from past Super Bowls? It's hard to remember. You know, these aren't things you, you, you cherish, yeah. you know, like wedding work you, you, you can cherish mm. and, um, man. And it's very rewarding for that reason. Um, so you feel like you're kind of part of something bigger with weddings. Um, and a lot of people don't see it that way. They, <laughs> they feel very burnt out. I'm just out. saying, you're like blowing people's minds right now. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it, um, <laughs> it, it took years for me to realize this. Mm-hmm. It took years. Most people don't make it this far to get mm-hmm. to that realization. Right. The burnout, you know, I think, um, what was it? Um, uh, like WPPI folks did like surveyed like, Man, that was like tens of thousands of photographers. I think the average lifespan in the in the career is like three to five years. Yep. Yep. And it, it, it's a little longer if you're married. So if you're like a married couple doing it, you do uh, last a little longer. Huh. But I, I'm pretty sure it was like solo female uh, um, photographers is like three or four years. Solo male photographers, like four or five years. And then married couples, maybe like six or seven. Hmm. But that is so short for yeah. any career. I mean, there's no career that that's yeah. the case. Three no. to five years. So the burnout rate's extremely high. Mm. And um, so, yeah, you, like you said, you have to figure out those small wins. You have to figure out those ways to make it um, make it sustainable. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that happened for us just, just a couple of years ago where I really felt like, okay, I'm going to sink into this and enjoy it and, and love it for what it is. And so that's kind of yeah epic, that's kind of what it would have done so good that's such a, a timely and encouraging reminder yep. because i think a lot of wedding photographers i could i mean i definitely for me coming out of last year it's hard not to be a little jaded towards weddings after yeah. your association last year was like this is not what i'm used to i i got off the phone with all my couples having to rebook everything having to like renegotiate contracts like figure things out and then you come into this year and start the season all over. And you're like, all right. It's almost like PTSD. You're like, yeah. oh my gosh. Like yeah. last year was just like, so not what we were expecting at all. Oh, so to really come back that. into this year with like a good frame of mind is so yeah. important. It's like good to have that encouragement going into a new season. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of that thinking was tested last year. Yeah. Um, for the first time in my whole, in our whole career doing this, I felt like I wasn't able to give clients like a win-win scenario with us and them where Mm. it felt mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm. It really did feel like you or me, who's going to win, fight or die. Like, it was just like, it's like, uh, it felt very zero sum last year and I hated that. Yeah. And you're Um, also fighting for your associate shooters. Like you're, you're fighting to keep 
bread on their table yes. as well. And and for us, I was for Heidi and I, we were a bit more uh, gracious with our own jobs, and we did even like refund some people that we ultimately just did not want to work with. Um, but I don't have that leeway when it's other people's money, mm-hmm. and I there's an obligation to um, for me to fight for them. And um, I think I th- they've told me that they're all appreciative of that, and that's that's great. But at the same time, it took a lot of um, it t- it took a big emotional toll on me, especially early on. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, but it's good to be now. Like now, it feels mm-hmm. so much better with that having been behind us Mm -hmm. and also just like I was saying earlier, just like um, sort of a, you know, pat myself on the back. Hey, we made it. Yeah. You know, and every business should be able to do that right Mm now. Like if you're still booking and still shooting, dude, you just survived like what should have killed your business. Mm -hmm. Undoubtedly, like a pandemic that shuts down social gatherings and that's what you do for a living. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like if you're still around, great you've you've been doing some good things you you made it work yeah whatever you had to do um and so some people obviously like we were saying earlier consciously left photography because it was like oh i can't deal with that yeah um and that's totally that's totally fair that's totally fine i know there's like a lot of also definitely probably more commonly a lot of people were on the edge of kind of like i might not want to do this anymore and then COVID hit and it's like yeah okay yeah, like this not. now makes this is like yeah. a clear sign that i need to right transition out so mm-hmm. yeah how did you hear about Ryan and Heidi was it through workshop I think it was I think that was the first year because Mark was going to workshop in 2016 yeah yeah I think it was 2016 You're right yeah I think so 18 was the last yeah. year yep yeah, and that's how I had first heard of it and yeah, that's 16 that's, 17 18 that's why I've had the yeah. bell notification turned on for Fortune in the North <laughs> since <laughs> <laughs> subscribe <laughs> please click and subscribe yeah uh, what was that what was the idea behind workshop um, just yeah I think it was so it was um, it was me Heidi and Lev Cooperman uh-huh. who's another local oh, nice. shooter okay. here yeah. and uh, yeah we just got to talking like hey maybe um, we could do a workshop together uh, seems like those are popular um, and so we did a small one. We did like a, it was, um, 15 people okay. and it was in, uh, Brooklyn, uh, actually right next to where the big workshop took place. And, um, it went great. Like people bought all the tickets we, we had to sell for it and, um, they had fun and they got a lot out of it. And it was a great day and we did a bunch of stuff. We talked business and editing and did some shooting and mm-hmm. just kind of all sorts of stuff. And, um, and a lot of them were like, hey, this is great. We need something like this in New York. We don't have anything like this in New York because we only have Photo Plus Expo, which is like the the like uh, like the other WPPI, right? Yep. Um, Uncle Bob's workshop. Yeah, Uncle Bob's <laughs> workshop. And I've been I've been there. Uh, I, I've gone to that a couple of times. It's obviously just a totally different vibe. It's an expo. Mm-hmm. It's and then it has like breakout sessions. It has stuff. vowels in the name. <laughs> You got, that's gotta go. You got you gotta kill the vowels. That was the first thing we knew. Uh, yeah, why why we named that? That was that was crazy. Uh, that was another that was another kind of creation of uh, of um, my buddy Nick who helps us with. It was stuff. awesome. It was so cool. Oh, and yeah. it was just like W R K S H P. Yeah, I remember the like, logo so vividly. So yeah, sick. yeah. Like what? Like had like a roll of flex like on this wings. workshop or that workshop. Where we're like, no, let's just be workshop. Like yeah. we are the one. Yeah. And it was very ambitious and, and the website was like workshopworkshop.com, right? Yeah. 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 Someone freaking had workshop.com. Well, it was like, yeah, I guess that would make sense. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so we did that, and then like that was technically the first year. But like the next year was like the first big big workshop that like the one that people would know, and that we just went balls to the wall on man like that was just ludicrous. I don't looking back on it, I'm like, why did we do that? And um, <laughs> I, I can safely say, and I hope this is encouraging to you, I'm sitting here now because of that. Oh yeah, like I mean that's crazy because yeah that's how we met. Yeah, I mean um, like that mm-hmm. that one yeah. that first one yeah completely revolutionized how I approach business Dang, and do awesome. what I do. That's and, awesome. And just set me up to succeed. I like had a very clear vision 
set, sitting in Max Wanger's class, I yeah, yeah. came mm. up with my catchphrase, lean into what makes you different. Yeah. Like hearing Benja's stories, hearing Jonas's stories completely rocked me. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that has been the biggest reward for us. Is There's actually been a lot of people that have said that mm-hmm. and a lot of people that have met through workshop. And we know so many people that now like second shoot for each other and they just are connected. And that's really awesome because we didn't make any money. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, like it was so not worth it, especially given the risk. I mean, just yeah. to, a quick rundown on how that practically works out, which you n- know about. Yeah. Um, when you announce something like that, because we, when we announced it, we, we launched with 30 teachers and six keynotes who were outside of, so 36 people who we paid good money yeah. for. Um, there's none of this, oh, you're working for free. This is, you should just like, we'll pay for your travel. No, like everyone, that was a big thing. There was some other conferences happening at the time where that was the norm. And okay. we just were like, no, we're mm-hmm. going to be the one that we pay our teachers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's not a lot. It's not like, it's not even worth their time. Technically, like yeah. you really couldn't pay everyone worth their time. Right. Yeah. It's not feasible. No mm-hmm. conference would ever work like that. So there has to be a bit of like, you're kind of like helping take. out, giving back yep. and wanting to be a part of the experience, but, but great connections too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like with other teachers. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, um, and so when you launch something like that, you're committing to paying all those people, but then you're also committing to food and the space in New York, everything is expensive and all the things that go along with it. And so you, the day we announce is the day we go into well into six figures of debt. Just immediately, mm-hmm. just right off the bat, we're like, now we're in loads of debt. We didn't really think of it like that when we when we were launching it because we were so confident that like, It'll oh, be, this is just yeah. going to be like sell out in a day. Um, turns out it's really hard to convince people to buy. You know, I think um, the tickets were well, they were like they were different tiers, but they I think sometimes like fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Which is insanely reasonable. Such a good reasonable deal. considering the people we bring yes. we were bringing in, and that it was three full days. So yeah. this is like yeah, a long, it is like yeah, long thing. Um, and so yeah, it's very very hard to convince people of that. Uh, and we didn't have a track record, so no, mm-hmm. we just sure. were using the names we brought in. Um, and the first one was in September, early August. Lev and I had to have a talk. We were so still in debt. We were about like eighty thousand dollars off. Jeez. Like almost a month out, oh and we're like, gosh. now we had a serious conversation of, do we cancel? And and, and we very we were close to canceling. Wow. And just like we cut our losses, hopefully get as much money back as possible, and never do this again. You know that was like a, a major thought that we had at that time. And I think we just thought we we can do this final push. We can get teachers to help. We can we can figure out a way. And literally, like we we broke even. Uh, maybe we made one tickets worth of profit. You know, two tickets worth, something like that. Like the last two that trickled in, we're like, oh, we're <laughs> we're making money now. <laughs> um, and so it was so tight. And part of that is like we did spend a lot of money on teachers, and that was that's the, where the most of the cost goes. So mm-hmm. we knew we couldn't afford 36 teachers for future ones. Yeah. Um, so we did pare down a little bit. Um, but yeah, every year was like, are we going to make it? Are we going to do it? And we, we made some money after all three years combined. But I, I, I love and I at one point crushed the numbers. I don't know what it was exactly, but it was like, you know, two or three weddings worth of what of money for three years of incredible stress yes. and and going almost going like having to declare bankruptcy and like you know like like all those things i'm just like um wow not worth it mm-hmm. not worth it and such so, a good learning experience though totally like, and yeah. It, yeah. if you wanted to do any kind of education in the future like that we know what works and what doesn't work yep yeah, yeah. and by the third like it was more profitable every year so mm-hmm. we did improve on on the model the business model but Ultimately, we knew that how we were approaching it, which was like small classes, very like hands-on learning experiences, it's, yeah. it's just expensive to do that. Yeah. If you put everyone in an auditorium with one speaker, yeah. that makes a lot more sense financially. Yeah. That's how a lot of them are done. Yep. And, that's, and we realized that the hard way, you know, we learned that the hard way, like, oh, that's why people do that because yeah. 
it's so risky to do it the other way. Yep. Um, but yeah, like so many people coming away with great experiences and like that is awesome. And like we still hear stories like that. And Lev and I constantly text each other and we're just like, oh, we, like someone just posted a workshop thing and someone did that. And and we're just like, we went out on a high note. People loved it. They had fun, like very, very few kind of like bad experiences. And if there was a bad experience, it was just with like one class, but like yeah. largely everyone really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was like, let's just like hang our hats on that and, and call it quits. And I don't know, maybe there's something way in the future, but um, our risk tolerance at this point is a little yeah. tighter. So, um, yeah, you yeah. could always do like an online version called like workshop from home and then <laughs> nine online. Um, yeah, <laughs> nine. Uh, yeah. Um, that's, that is an option. It's funny. We toyed around with so many ideas of like, how can we use this brand, leverage what we have, figure out a way to make money. And like, ultimately we just came back to like, oh, that's just a huge effort mm -hmm. for maybe not a big return and also with Lev and us like we we're each of those years our business was getting better Pers mm -hmm. our personal business our wedding businesses yeah we're like that's working that's mm -hmm. that's what we should focus on like mm -hmm. don't take these huge risks um, and uh, you know maybe do something a bit more yeah a bit more reasonable um, yeah. so that was yeah that was workshop um, but uh, thanks yeah. for doing it what? Thanks for doing it. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. Anytime. On behalf of a lot of people, dude. I'll do it again. <laughs> I, w I won't. <laughs> Just kidding. That will never happen again. <laughs> So, yeah, it was really fun. Like just like the first year was literally just like us asking all our friends to teach. Yeah. There was like two teachers out of like the 30 that we had never met. But they everyone, were all like rock stars was, to me, so. Yeah, yeah, everyone was just like a friend like, "Hey, you want to come? You want to come?" And uh Jai, mm -hmm. uh, who was yeah. on your podcast, mm -hmm. was uh, awesome. I had met Jai, like, uh, I don't know when it was, in the, maybe a year or two before that when we were, we shot weddings over in Australia during our, like, New Zealand stint. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, great dude and, and just an awesome guy. And he, we were, like, as we were formulating the lineup, I think he caught wind of, like, a couple other people who was it maybe like ollie and and sign sophie who mm -hmm. were gonna mm -hmm. um who were gonna teach and uh he's like dude i think i'm just gonna come to new york um like do you need do you need i, I can like come in and teach something i'm like oh, i'm like yeah but like man we don't have pay for for like what we would pay like because we were paying everyone's travel plus mm -hmm. all this stuff Jeez, yeah. he's like dude i'll teach for free like don't even worry about it i just want to be there like it sounds fun so encouraging it's like awesome. so encouraging um and i can see now where he is yeah that was in 2016 like again it's like us when we were traveling in europe getting and, the experience you know, you're taking those financial hits yeah. yeah that was a financial hit for him but that was probably a really great moment for him to grow teach a class refine what he wants to do yeah. figure it out yep um it's a way of investment for yeah. sure it's a different oh, way of for sure yeah. and it's always frustrating for like the established photographers to look at like the up and coming photographers like oh they're undercutting everything and well that's the game we all play yep. mm -hmm. and you have to figure out a way to make it work yep. and um and also it's not sustainable and so you know exactly. it, it won't last forever but right. um you know i i never it's it is frustrating when that happens but you i never got that mad about it because mm -hmm. um that's what we did yep and mm -hmm. that's how we got our start and it was a, it's a great way to get our start and you as a more experienced business should have more strategy at that point and For have sure. more uh, ability to land a client versus yes. a beginner and like exactly then you need to reevaluate what you're doing to, yeah. st with you losing that job then yeah. ask the questions why did you lose that yep yep work towards getting that client instead mm -hmm. 100 usually at that point if you're doing things right you're probably turning away people because you're so booked you know yes and so focus more on getting to that place. Right. Yeah. And the other interesting thing is like one, I, I think we've done now 80 international weddings as a studio. When you get to that point now, because we're the guys that have done 80, mm -hmm. that's more than basically anyone I know. Mm -hmm. There's a few exceptions to that in the New York area. That's mm -hmm. more than basically anyone we know. And now 
there's a trust level with the client. Right. So like newer clients who are getting married overseas and stuff, hey, we've done this a lot. We're very experienced at how this works, mm-hmm. what what could go wrong, and like all those things. Um, so now we can charge full price for all these international weddings. Yep. And yeah. yeah, we're not winning all of those, but the ones we do win, then they're worth it financially. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, it's like a shooting locally. So mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, so there's, there is advantage in it for that reason too, but. Epic man, we don't want to take more of your time because we know you're shooting an elopement today because you're on that on that grind, <laughs> on that grind. Yeah, I have the weekend off, which is nice, which That's is cool. like super rare. Yeah, but uh, yeah, fantastic, dude. It's been fun. Yeah. I, I've been I've been feeling like I've, I've just completely dominated the conversation. We and, wanted you to. And, uh, That's the whole point of this. That's what we do. Yeah, but I want to hear from you guys too. Yeah, well, we can do that after. Okay, for extra innings. Oh yeah, so we, yeah, we have uh, a little. Uh, little episode we always do on our patreon so if you're interested in that you can check out patreon in the description we can have a little chat about that you don't even know that this exists do you no (laughs) thank you to our patreon for sponsoring today's episode (laughs) we have seven now we do have seven hey shout out to you seven let's go all right well thank you so much for being on ryan yeah we appreciate you thank you for taking the time yeah love you guys that's great this is so so fun yeah Yeah. cool cool